Hello, did you know that myocarditis is a secondary or caused by a pathologic disorder? One good example is an infection which is caused by um, parasites, could be fungus, could be bacteria, but it, based on research, most common myocarditis is caused by virus. So, Myu means the muscles of the heart. Carditis is coming from the word cardio, which means heart. And itis, which is the suffix, is it means inflammation. So it's a simple inflammation of the muscles of the heart. I'm your nurse on duty, so we're going to discuss myocarditis. The most common infection na nagkakos ng myocarditis is the viral infection. Ano yung mga infections na pwede magkos? Uh, pag sinabi kasi natin na viral infection, virus ang causative agent niya, so, nagkakos siya ng proliferation at nang, nag leads to harmful um, effect in our system. Uh, virus cannot reproduce without the assistance of host. So, yung tao, yung katawan ng tao, ang ginagawa niyang host, then, um, nag introduce siya ng genetic material niya into the cells para makaroon siya, magkaroon siya ng maraming productions ng virus. Pag marami ng virus inside sa katawan ng tao, doon na tayo nagkakaroon ng sign in symptoms. Sample ng virus na pwedeng mag ng myocarditis is the Farbo virus B19, the human herpes virus 6, and the SARS-CoV-2 infections which is known as COVID-19. So, what are the manifestation and symptoms? Um, possible kang magkaroon ng fever, chills, sore throat, nasal congestion, runny nose, and cough. So, the question is, is um, pwede ka ba magkaroon ng uh, myocarditis as part of the complication just receiving the vaccine? Based on research uh, in Pfizer which, and also in uh, Moderna, which is classified as um, mRNA COVID-19 vaccines, one of the adverse uh, reactions is myocarditis, which is common for male adolescent and young adults. Uh, you can check po uh, the research that is being conducted. And next is the bacterial infection. So, in, this is another causative agent. At meron din pong uh, non-infectious causes or caused by non-causative agent like bacteria and virus. Sample for this is the cardiotoxin. Ano yung sinatawag natin na cardio, cardiotoxins? Um, there could be possibility for cardiotoxicity. Um, it is the condition where there is a damage of the heart muscles. Uh, pwedeng result po ito ng mga chemotherapy drugs at possible uh, din po yung uh, antibiotics such as penicillin, sulfonamide drugs, and other anti-seizure medication, and some illegal substances like cocaine. Another one is the systemic disorder. Like yung may mga autoimmune um, disorder, Another autoimmune disorder, a good example po is HIV AIDS. About the symptoms, abdominal pain, joint pain, loss of appetite because of the presence of abdominal distension, the early signs of easy fatigability because lacking of oxygen and nutrients in the tissues and cells. Next is dysmia or difficulty on breathing. Um, yung description ng patient is the feeling of not being able to breathe well enough because of the insufficient oxygen supply into the circulatory system. So, nag increase ang oxygen demand uh, coming from the tissues and cells or organs. Next is the palpitation. Palpitations means yung feeling like one's heart is beating forcefully and it is not normal na ma-feel mo yung heartbeat mo. It is because there is an inflammation inside the heart. So, it is expected that you could have uh, or the patients may have chest pain. 
So, yung chest pain is a discomfort na it could be described by the patient as sharp, uh, painful, dull, pressure, heaviness, or squeezing type of pain. It could be associated with or the pain could radiate to the upper abdomen, jaw. The patients could have nausea and vomiting, sweating, shortness of breath which is a symptoms which is very critical when we talk about cardiovascular problem. Next is the fever because there is an inflammation. Uh, one of the manifestation that you can expect is that yung patients magkakaroon ng fever. And of course, arrhythmias. Since ang arrhythmias is the abnormal uh, pulsations of the heart, it could be fast too fast or too slow tachycardia or bradycardia it is because the heart is trying to compensate but there is an inflammation of our, our abnormalities so ang tawag po dun is arrhythmias next is dizziness dizziness is caused by insufficient oxygen in the cerebral, cerebral system so nagkakosya ng pagkahilo in the earliest sign for myocarditis is the exercise intolerance or activity intolerance. Since madaling mapagod yung patient kasi nga insufficient yung oxygen supply, supply and nutrients and there is a presence of circulatory overload, the presence of edema, fluid excess into the circulation kasi hindi niya madali yung fluid na excess sa kidney para ma-excrete. Next is the diagnostic test or the using the ECG electrocardiography used uh, in electrodes and it's being placed on the skin uh, for recording of the heart electrical activity. Next is the cardiac biomakers. Cardiac biomakers is known as the troponin complex. Uh, troponin complex is composed of troponin I, T, and C. So, this troponin is a complex of a regulatory protein that are integral to the muscles contraction in skeletal muscles and cardiac muscles. So, the usual range or normal range for the troponin is 0 to 0 0.04. If there is a presence of cardiac muscle damage or skeletal muscles damage, presence of myocardial infarction or stroke, mataas po ang results ng troponin complex. It is an indicator also for a silent myocardial infarction. Next is the cardiac imaging. Cardiac imaging or the MRI is to use to assess the function and structure of the cardiovascular system. And the last one is the endocardial biopsy is used to extract a sample cell or tissues for examination. It could be through aspiration biopsy. It could be excisional or incisional biopsy. Let's talk about medication. Diuretic is one of the choice for patients with myocarditis since in patients meron siyang circulatory overload. So the useful uh, effect of these diuretics is of course to promote diuresis or pang increase ng uh, urine output. So, um, it increased the excretions of the water from the body through the kidney. Next is immunoglobulin therapy. Immunoglobulin therapy is used to a mixture of antibodies or a normal immunoglobulin uh, to treat a number of health conditions. Sample po nyo yung ITP, yung immune uh, thrombocytopenic purpura sa mga bata at yung Kawasaki disease. Same also with other uh, autoimmune disorder. Next is corticosteroid. Yung corticosteroid is a steroid hormones. May dalawang classifications ito. That is the glucocorticoids and the mineral corticoids. Sila yung mga involved sa physiologic process lalo pag mataas yung um, stress response yung immune response and regulation, yung pag mayroon mga inflammations, 
um, protein catabolism, blood electrolytes level, and etc. So, ginagamit ito, but this is mon, uh, mostly given for patients with inflammations like myocarditis. And because it is an anti-inflammatory drugs. Next is the ACE inhibitor. ACE inhibitors or angiotensin converting enzymes inhibitor are the class of medications na primarily given for patients na may high blood pressure and usually for, for patients with heart failure. Since the main complications of myocarditis is heart failure. So there is a circulatory overload. Yung uh, actions ng ACE inhibitor kasi nagkukosya ng uh, relaxations of the blood vessels at nagdi-decrease po yung blood volume which leads to lower blood pressure and decrease oxygen demand ng heart. Another one is the beta blockers. Beta blockers are class of medications na predominantly used to manage abnormal heart rhythm since one of the manifestation or symptoms is arrhythmias. So, to protect the heart from a second heart attack, myocardial infarction, after ng first attack, usually, ito ang binibigay na uh, maintenance ng isang pasyente na nagkaroon ng arrhythmias. It is also widely used for to treat high blood pressure or, or hypertension. So, next is the inotropic agent. It is the medicines that change the force of the heart's contraction. So, sabi natin it in, in the arrhythmias, it, there could be a tachycardia or increased cardiac rate or bradycardia or slow cardiac rate. So, to maintain the normal rate of the heart, they prescribe an atropic agent. And the last one is the anti-arrhythmias drug that prevent and treat abnormal beat. So, Usually, these are, this type of medication is given for the presence of dysrhythmias or irregularities of the heartbeat, regardless if it's too fast or too slow. So, let's talk about nursing care. So, the treatment on the underlying causes will be based on the manifestations and possible complication. So, yung bed rest to decrease uh, cardiac workload and prevent complication is very important. Uh, bakit po bed rest? Dahil pag less ang activity ng patient, there is also less oxygen demand. The more the activity, the more the oxygen demand, the more contractions of the heart, and the more chest pain. Continuous cardiac monitoring because of the presence of, of arrhythmias and of course the adverse reactions of the medication. Um, remember that the medications that could be given for the patient is not only to treat the uh, adverse the, the, the symptoms of the patient but also there is some um, adverse reaction. Next is administer medication as prescribed. And it is necessary, it is very important that uh, we need to assess the chest pain because it indicates that pag nabawasan yung chest pain ng patient, ibig pong sabihin nun, uh, less yung myocardial damages or less yung uh, damages sa tissue ng heart. Uh, the more deep chest pain, the prolonged yung chest pain, uh, it leads to more critical situation for the patient. Monitor of digital toxicity. So, it may occur when you take too much of the drug at one time. So, a good example of digital toxicity is the digoxin na medi medication. So, pag yung sumobra siya, ito yung mga manifestation, which is very important. Dysrhythmias, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, bradycardia, headache, and malay. So, yung antidote dapat nito is available at bedside. And we should inform immediately the, the doctor of the possibility of toxicity. Oxygen therapy is very important since the patient is having difficulty on breathing. And that symptoms or manifestation indicates that there is a decrease 
oxygen supply in the circulation. That is why the lungs is trying to compensate the demands of oxygen. So the heart will not be able to pump well to supply the necessary oxygen. So nagi increase ang heart rate nagkakaroon ng takip niya. So we need to, to place the patient in semifolders. We need to monitor the vital sign of the patients, which is the very basic to give us the picture and conditions of the patient. Presence of or signs of manifestations of abnormalities, in particular arrhythmias, um, giving us the picture kung ano na yung status and what are the things that we need to do to help the patients. And it is through collaborative management also. Relief pain, in particular chest pain, is very important or one of the main goal in nursing care for patients with myocarditis because chest pain is an indicator for um, increase or presence of myocardial damage, in particular myocardial tissues. So it indicates that there is an insufficient supply in the myocardium that later may lead to myocardial infarction. We need to instruct the patients for gradual increase in activity and report any symptoms that may occur with increased activity. Though the patients may say na wala na yung nararamdam ng chest pain, but it is very important that we need to check also the laboratory result for the presence of the troponin I and T still the patient is in a silent myocardial infarction pag mataas pa rin yung enzyme na yon. because even wal, uh, wala nang complain ng chest pain ang troponin mataas pa rin siya na nag indicate na may tissue damage so um, gradual increase ng activity is being advice and we need to instruct to avoid competitive sports and alcohol after the discharge. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell. God bless.